So I'm putting Fet Tech on all these guys' quads, but the catch this time around is they're running their traditional ESCs. The kind of the catch for these guys not wanting to switch is not because of the way it flies, but because of the durability. And generally speaking, the Fet Tech and Kiss ESCs have been notorious for braking. So if we take that factor out of it and let them run their own ESCs that they're used to, like Drew's individual ESCs, Bubby's Foxier ESC, and just run it with the Fet Tech G4 flight controller, which seems to work really well with BL Heli. In theory, they can still get that amazing flying quad, but with what they're used to. So I'm curious to see what Drew thinks, what Bubby thinks, and what Sean thinks. This is the Moxie Pro Spec build, except for the flight controller. This is a Fettech G4, and uh, I'm really excited to try it out because yesterday we had a little flight session right after some filming, and I got to fly one of Alex's quad. He was flying a pirate frame, and he had this exact flight controller. That was the best quad I've ever flown, and I mean, I liked it enough to buy so a flight controller. The biggest thing yeah. is the quad he flew was a Fettech board, and yeah. previously it had a Fettech ESC mm -hmm. that runs its own software. Our pilots primarily fly BL Heli. It's what the majority of the crowd flies. It's the common software. So this quad is a hybrid. Yeah. So what you flew yesterday was a hybrid between Fettech and BL Heli, and we built that on your quad. This is just a slapped on tune that's kind of like the golden starting point. And I'm curious to see what you think of it. Yeah. Oh to take off. Still locked in. Give it like a nice, just in a straight line, punch out like into the air. Oh, heck yeah. Nice and smooth. Okay, that though. That's just you letting off. It needs a little tuning. Yeah, for sure. Right. Oh, How's it flying though? Compared to your actual like setup you normally use, now that you're in the air ripping it, what do you think, honestly? You know, I kind of get what you mean, that feel, but um... Yeah, man, I kind of like it. Like, I think after we get it some tuning, I think I'll like it even better. As is, though, where does it, like, compare? Same? Slightly better? What I, do you think? I think, like, in terms of, like, flying-wise and, like, the little jitter we saw, I think my quad might fly a little bit better. But, like, in terms of, like, locked-inness, like, that's so straight. Like, mine still had, like, a slight little thing every now and then, but, like, that's hands-off. It is worth noting, though, that this quad that we put the Festech board in is not a new quad by any Yeah, it is very, very beat I up. think it's worth making it fair. This is a beat up frame, a beat up ESC. Yeah, I think we really can raise is. the pins a little bit. I gave him a tune that was off of one of my quads, which is about 120 grams lighter. So I think we could bump the pins up and you might make it a little bit more locked in. But it looks smooth. That's the biggest thing with Kiss is it's a smooth feeling in the stick. You don't really, I don't think get a ton better flight performance, um, but I do think that people who fly Kiss notice how smooth it is and how well it tracks. Uh, I gotta put it through space some more, but yeah. it flies great. Yeah. I like the feel. Yeah. It's the M1, literally beta flight. All the apps do this, except for my Kiss Ultra app. Oh, Apple! I can edit videos fine, but I mean, I'm that was really not good at it. That's M1 optimized. Kiss is not M1 optimized. Beta flight's not M1 optimized. I know! Ugh! <laughs> Stop. I'm, I'm really frustrated. <laughs> Throttle oh roll. man, look at them. You move the sticks and the bars move. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> What's your uh, arm? What's your arm? I'm just done. If you're ever looking for any of our rates or tunes or whatever, we try to keep updated information on the Rotor Riot store. I just find my rates because I, I don't have them memorized. So here are my beta flight rates. And you can convert them to to KISS rates? Yep, or? they're the same. Oh, it's just the same? Okay. It'll feel slightly different because the KISS PID controller is like... I've actually been thinking about going even lower. Remember when my rates used to be considered low? Right, and then Everyone dogged on me now and now I actually high. have high rates and I'm like, they're the same rates. By the way, minimum command at 1,000, that just like enables air mode. Steel has a video which yeah. shows like how to basically have air mode on a switch. I just don't 
So it's just air mode all the time. Right now, it's I, air mode all I the time. I do kind of want air, air mode on a switch. We'll figure. We can go. We okay, can, we can do let's that Let's get later. it flying. Let's get it. <laughs> this is how these awful motors. <laughs> these are beautiful motors. <laughs> these motors have been so beat up. Sean actually like built a new quad, which is like gonna give it a fair shot. <laughs> Drew yeah, and Bubby just took used gear. At least uh, Drew used a new frame. To be fair, Bubby just used. I used a prototype V3 Moxie that I've had for months. So it's ready to fly now. It's ready to fly now. It's pretty quick. That was so fast. <laughs> You're actually flying KISS on your ESCs, your frame, your motors. It looks really good. Something I'm feeling is it's a lot easier to stop where I intend to stop, if that makes sense. Yep. It just points where you want it to go. How's your, like, mm. if you full throttle, how's your, um, like... Oh, let me just see if I want that Rubik's nice and locked in. Yeah, oh, that, that was nice. good. Oh, it's smooth, too, on the punch. Yeah, it feels good. Hands off the sticks. Look at that. That's locked, man. That is locked in. Woo, that just feels like really good float. Yeah, it looks oh, good. That, it that, looks really good. Toss it over the trees. Oh yeah, beautiful. It looks good. It looks really. It sounds really good. Hey, you're looking really locked in with it too. Oh my! <laughs> you just went for it. You just went for it. And you're doing everything you would normally do. I guess my question is, is it better than what you fly? I don't know. I mean, it needs more time with it. Like, I'll tell you, it doesn't immediately strike me as worse. And, and I mean, that's a really good thing. Like, I don't know. Like, I think you have to fly back. I got some of those bunny hops. I'm getting more of those bunny hops than I get with beta flight. Yep. Um, but I do feel like when I just go, Wah! boom, hands off the sticks, beta flight shakes a little bit more. Yep. Like this just feels like, just feels like it's not Locked. moving at all. Like I don't, you know, no, no prop wash. That's, That's just a base nice. tune as well. Yeah, for for a base tune, this is very nice. Yeah. And I got really frustrated with tuning beta flat. I don't even do it anymore. I just use Tyler's tune. I would love to see you, Drew, since you you come from doing more traditional PID tuning because you've been in it for a minute. Boom. I would for love that. to see you actually go into the kiss pits. We talk about bunny so hop. I feel like is that just raising pitch eye? I think yeah, raising pitch eye and even the P a little bit on pitch. We know it flies really good with this tune. Mm -hmm. I think So just kind of raise everything I think up you a little bit. Start tuning it the way you would try but I think you should try tuning it the way you would. It's just been so long and, and it just felt like it, beta fly got to a point where tuning didn't do anything. It was all about like if I wanted to actually feel any difference I had to do some crazy yeah. filter settings. Oh, nice. Motors. Yeah cool. Yeah, those are fine. What I want out of a out of a PID tune is I want the PIDs to be just high enough to take care of all the bad flight characteristics I want to get rid of and no higher. I don't like I want things to be a little looser. Right. I want to have a little bit of headroom in case I am flying with bent props. Yep, so that's so, a feature I want to tell you and Sean about. So they, uh this is set point weight and D term. I have it at hundred, that's where it maxes out. When you guys flew my FETEC quad, I had this set at 85. The lower this number, the like more it's almost like um Feed forward or something. We're kind of just the feel of the quad. So right now it's just like I'll leave it at 100. So this should be the most locked in feel. But if you get the pids at a certain point, but you want to, the quad to still feel soft a little bit, you can lower this to like 90 or 85. Okay. Or something like that. Gotcha. I know Steel uses like 80 or something. Okay. He likes the quad to almost like be a little bit loose. loose That's just loose, another yeah. feature you should know about because you can play with that. But yeah. you know, I leave it at 100 and it seems to fly great. Ultimately, the biggest downside I feel like there is to KISS FETEC is the durability. I feel like there's a stain on KISS because for years now there's been problems with like KISS ESCs oh, catching yeah, like, on fire. When I first not started, I burned 50 of the KISS 18 amp ESCs in the very beginning and that was, they were 25 bucks a piece. That was expensive. Yeah. And I mean like for me, I run the FETEC ESC and for the most part I have no issues but I predominantly fly around trees and soft grass so it's like not really an issue, right, but yeah, you guys... I crash, I crash into concrete, right. and I need something that's going to take uh, a lot of abuse. But the ESC has been the failure point, Yeah, usually. it's always been the ESC. So I've never we, really had a problem with a yeah. flight controller before. So if we yeah. remove the ESC variable and just use your guys' normal ESCs, which is also nice because you can use any ESC, you're not like locked to one thing, even if you have to maybe jump through a few hoops. Yeah, I, you know, I think Drew's biggest complaint, he couldn't use his individual ESCs. You know, mm -hmm. me and him, for the longest time, switched to individual ESCs because 
the foreign ones just couldn't take the abuse. Right. I'm trying to get away from the individuals just because it's a lot more effort to build the quad. Right. And I'm trying to go back to foreign ones. I'm trying to see if the new foreign ones that are out now Got can it. take the abuse that I put them through. And so far, so good, but I haven't done a whole lot of flying, so. All three quads are different. So Bubby's is using a Foxier Reaper ESC. It's a foreign one ESC with the Fetech G4 flight controller. Yours is using a T-Motor ESC yep. Yep. with the G4, and his is a new quad. And then Drew's is running, what ESCs are you, the individuals? T-Motor individuals, the F-35s. Okay. Yours looks really smooth. I felt a little bit of a oscillation there, but. Really? I think I did. Maybe I'm sure imagining things. Yours looks I really locked, actually. <laughs> Like it looks like you can raise the pits to make it a little bit more, but like it sounds smooth. Yeah, it sounds really good. That was a really awesome power loop. Yeah, like no prop like wash. Felt, yeah, it felt, felt really good. But like, I don't want to speak for it. Like ultimately, like what do you feel with it? You feel like it's... Yeah. I'm, I'm doing a race course right now. It's not really what I usually do. I should just try to freestyle and see what it does. Like smooth that was pretty awesome. Outs. Oh yeah. You hear that flick too? I like when I drop the throttle completely, I love the way it felt. That's like, what Drew it said just, as well. It just stayed on track yeah. exactly where I thought it was going to go versus like veering. Sometimes beta flight will veer. I think the, the best thing I can say about it is that it always goes where I tell it to go. Right. Like, I haven't crashed into a gate yet. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I definitely love power loops better with this. I struggle with power loops and it seems like every time I try to do a power loop in beta flight, my power loops veer a little bit. Oh, man, that's tight. Like, nice. when I go to power loop, it'll kind of go off axis a little bit. And I don't have that at all with this. Like it's just exactly where I tell it to go. I was able to power loop the first try from the bottom gate over into the top gate, right through the second hole. No big deal. It's hard to explain, but it just feels like it's more locked in, I guess. Like it's doing what I'm telling it to do more accurately. Keep trying it. I haven't crashed it yet. So we don't know if it's going to last the durability test yet. Really hard, right? Like really hard full speed into the into the tree trunk from a trip from a Maddie flip and do yeah. train, it's fine. I mean, like flight controllers don't really break often, so like I didn't, I didn't really expect it to break, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. That, I'm thinking that the flight controller being more less abused yeah. will probably make this work for me. Yeah, you definitely. know, now that I can use my own ESCs, I think it's actually usable. Yeah. Now that I don't have to use a Kiss ESC, I'm, I'm not excited about like having to switch everything because I don't like having <laughs> to change everything that I'm used to. I know Beta Flight, like they're back in my hand. With all the projects that I do, Beta Flight definitely has a lot more switches to press Definitely. and a lot more functionality capabilities. Yeah. I don't know how to do any of that with KISS, so yeah. I have to learn it all over again. And I'm not really psyched about learning everything. Well, maybe KISS can be your freestyle stuff and then yeah. you can have your beta flight, which you know. Yeah. Try yeah. I do love learning new things, Yeah. so I'm excited to try it. I'm excited to take this out to like a, a real like freestyle Yeah, we gotta take it somewhere like concrete. At a, at a park field. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta go somewhere with concrete. Yep. <laughs> all right, guys, so I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks for if you're gonna try and run the KISS Fettech flight controller in your own quads because there's a few little things that I do that have given me great success over the course of the last year and a half running Fettech. This is the latest G4 flight controller and it comes with a few sets of cables right here which we'll talk about in a minute. But one thing this flight controller does not come with that I wish it did come with are these little gummies right here. These are little stack grommets and I love using these in my quads because typically we run in our flight controller stacks a stack screw all the way through the frame, ESC, and flight controller. But on the KISS flight controller, I don't really recommend doing that for a few reasons. First off, this flight controller does not come with gummies, and in fact, in order to use gummies, you would have to enlarge the hole size. That's no problem, except for I found in the past that really runs the risk of you know, damaging the flight controller, or as you'll see, it's really thin on the outside, so not necessarily the best idea to use that sort of method to you know drill out the holes and put gummies in there. So what I like to use are these little stacks isolator standoffs and all I do is I run a screw through my ESC. If you're running any normal ESC that has gummies you can use the gummies on the ESC still. Run a screw through your ESC with just a little bit exposed and then thread these bad boys on there and then mount your flight controller on. The other nice thing about doing this too is it gives the flight controller some more space above the ESC than normally. And in my opinion, that improves the performance of the quad greatly because you have less noise from wires and other things running in between your ESC and your flight controller. Another tip that I like to do with this flight controller in particular, this is the G4 flight controller from Fettech, is you can either solder to the board 
or you can use the connectors. Now, I like to use a mixture of the two sometimes, depending on how I have my quad arranged. So I like to obviously use the connector to go from the ESC to the flight controller, and then I like to use a plug for my receiver and then a plug for my video transmitter. That way, if I ever work to kill one of these in a crash, I just unplug everything, bring a new flight controller in, plop it on, plug everything in, and then transfer the information, and I'm good to fly once again. Super duper easy, really reliable, and I love this flight controller because it's very, very versatile. Now, if you're going to go out and try what the boys are doing, which is running a BL Heli ESC with a KISS flight controller, you are going to have to jump through some hoops at this time when this video is recorded in order to run BL Heli with KISS. The biggest hoop you're going to have to jump through is you will not be able to use BL Heli pass through to change the motor direction or your ESC settings with the KISS flight controller on. So if you're going to use a BL Heli ESC, you need to plug in a normal Betaflight flight controller into your 4.1 ESC to go ahead and reverse your motors and change your ESC settings, or you have to manually reverse the motors with the solder joints as well. Once you have all that set up, however, you simply put your KISS flight controller on, check the motor directions and everything like that, and you're good to go and you're good to fly. In fact, I think KISS flies incredible on BL Heli, almost as good, if not as good, as the KISS stuff does. So don't be afraid to try it. Just take an old flight controller you have laying around, make sure the pinout and everything is right, plug it into the ESC, do what you need to do, and then just hook it up. It's not that big of a deal, and hopefully by the time this video is out, there will be a firmware for this flight controller that has BL Heli pass-through included. Unfortunately, right now, at the time I'm filming this, that isn't something that exists. So if you're gonna use a BL Heli ESC, you're just gonna have to jump through a one or two extra hoops in order to make it work. If you're using the FETEC ESC combined with the FETEC flight controller, however, you can use the FETEC configurator. It's super nice and reliable. You can go in there, change your ESC settings, your motor direction, and everything else that you need to do. And in my opinion, if you wanna get the best performing quad on FETEC, I would recommend combining it with their ESC. I think it's time we jump back out into the field and see what the boys are up to, see how they're enjoying their quads, what they think about them, and who knows, maybe we'll have some converts here by the end of this video. It, I've actually been really liking it. Like I'm kind of, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm like I'm kind of mad that I don't that I, that I like it as much as I do. Why? Just I, I, I don't know, man. Like I just put together like what I thought was, in my opinion, was my my perfect beta flight quad. Like it flew really good, but like and then Vanover just came to town. I was like, your quad like, sucks. He was like, fly this. He's like, here, look at this G4 thing. And I'm like, it can't be that good. 
It's good. It's I mean, just... I've always liked the way Kiss flies. It, when someone who knows what they're doing can get it flying right for me, the problem has always been the like some of the technical issues which you work through and the durability. I've had no which... technical issues with this. It's been rock solid for me. So. I've, and I've had like a lot of hard crashes and like I know flight controllers don't break, but I actually... I would say like to add to what you're saying, yeah, it definitely does help to know someone who knows KISS. Like there's a few little tricks yeah. that we did on your quads. Like for example, building your quad on these rubber standoffs, like that's something that I found works consistently. And so I made all you guys this time build it all like that and all three of your quads fly great. Mm -hmm. Just little tricks like that which there's no manual for. So I do think you have to jump through a few hoops and then but like the tune wise it's just it's a tune that's in the, the configurator. Yeah. It's just called the golden starting point. Anyone can, can do it. Yeah. So now it's time we obviously keep flying it, crashing it, pushing it but then if you really like it and you're thinking about switching try it you know on another build with like different configurations see if you can repeat it you know because if you can only get one quad that's my problem with beta flies i can only get one quad to fly good and then it's not consistently flying well like this just flies well i haven't crashed it enough to know for sure but i my props are pretty mangled up i still haven't crashed to the level that i normally crash to know if it's durable enough but so far so good i love the way it flies yeah what's even better about it is i didn't have to tune it you did it for me so well i just put a, t a preset on there too <laughs> so i mean i didn't really do much i just went into the configurator clicked a preset i mean well, it's nice that there's presets loaded in there because you could build a quad similar to someone else's build, yeah. get their preset as a starting point, and honestly, it's probably going to be fine. Yep. I just use your golden oh, tune yeah. thing and change just the P and the I on the pitch axis. That's all I need. It was like a teeny tweak. And I do think that tuning PIDs is a lot more intuitive than tuning filters, just my personal opinion. You know, I think that there's a lot more information out there on, you know, what you could do that. So I think kids can, you know, with these presets now, can get you to a better starting point. And you, probably don't have to tweak it but if you need to it's not it's not hard yeah. and you guys are all on stock filtering as well so like you could in theory push it more i don't touch the but filters but they set the filters up for like normal yeah, five like inch for, stuff yeah and yeah. i will say kiss is this is a good note to make kiss is generally built around freestyle so like it's not necessarily something that i have raced much because it's almost like it can't keep up with like the speed of a racing quad it's really intended for freestyle where like beta fly you can pretty much do anything you want with it flight controller is awesome it's got eight motor outputs yeah i really like the eight yeah. motor outputs i like to tinker with things and i like to make weird projects and motor outputs is one of the things i look for in a flight controller it's really cool that it has eight motor outputs it doesn't even care about this gigantic heavy gopro mount on that my quad, i'm surprised you know? about i'm like, shocked about that it I flies mean, great even yeah. with all this weight talking about the flight controller really quick one thing i love about it is it's a built-in 30 30 and 2020 flight controller which is really nice and in the 2020 configuration it's got m2 holes but you just tweak it with your you know little exacto knife and then you have m3 I, holes. I was wondering what that was yeah I, I really like so that. that way you can run m2 screws or m3 screws you just tweak it out and so i love that because like if i've had times where i burn a 30 30 esc and i have a 2020 and i can throw it in there and fly the exact same like i don't need to buy a different flight controller the only downside to kiss fatec is you have to buy that flight controller so you cannot flash kiss on your beta flight t-motor flight controller or your hobby wing stack and it is a little pricey and it is so a little pricey if you pricey. see this video and you're interested in trying it yeah unfortunately there's no way that we can be like yeah just flash this onto the board you already have like no you got to buy this it's, it's a 75 dollar board oh. but there is a lot of power oh, in that oh, board yeah, a lot of money. oh link I mean, in the I think, description I think to be fair all flight controllers are going up in price right now that's true that it's, is true. and, and, and really kiss expensive. boards beforehand were the same price as the flight controllers maybe a tiny bit more mm -hmm. but unfortunately due to the chip shortage the reaper esc is a hundred dollar esc yeah. like yeah. it's the whole industry right now so there is a lot of power in that flight controller there's a lot of features in it and i think the direction that kiss is going right now where it's trying to be more compatible than with just like kiss escs i think is really exciting because i think you're going to start seeing a lot more pilots trying it because of that not being like locked into one esc and one flight controller at least you're only locked into the flight controller right. i don't know I think we've gotten a little spoiled over time you know as yeah. prices have come down you know when i first got into freestyle drones the amount of escs i had to put on a quad add up to 100 bucks so i mean it's oh, come yeah. down and now it's going back up a little bit. I mean, it'll fluctuate a little bit. What if I did want to throw one of these FCs on it, like a Cino up or even like a two inch little micro drone? Are there presets yeah. in there? Yeah, and there's actually some really awesome, you guys haven't even seen this yet, but this is the Fetec 326S all in one board. It's a 2020 mounting board. This all in one I have in my Cine Whoop and Kiss flies incredible. On a I've tried You're probably it on not going to crash this that hard too. So. No, and they recommend that you keep it on either ultralight five inch quads, like, okay. and I'm not talking racing quads. I'm talking like, you know, your sub 250. They don't really recommend you push this stack on like a successor. Mm -hmm. But like, I've I seen some. For it, so maybe you might be able be to get away with it. Yeah. But again, it's really more geared to the micro side of things. And they even have a smaller all in one, which is like a little 15 amp, which is great for your your whoops or your two inch quads on like three cell. I mean, they actually do have a variety of flight controllers, but they're all built 
kind of for one purpose. I love this all. So will that fit on like a dribblet? Because I'm kind of wanting to build it. Yeah, if you, this is that. 20 by 20. So uh, the 20 dribblet by 20, is 20 all in 20. one. Yep. And a lot of people are gonna say, okay, well this isn't new. You guys are four or five years behind time. Like Kiss has been around forever. But the reality is, a lot of people, including myself, have had issues with Kiss in the past, mainly with durability being mm -hmm. the biggest thing, and also just compatibility issues. Now we're starting to see this breakthrough. We're we're all running different ESCs, different setups and configurations, like, and they're all flying amazing. Couldn't do that beforehand, I don't think. I'm happy right now. We'll see how long it lasts. Yeah, we'll see how long <laughs> it lasts, Mr. Sean.